Welcome, and thank you for braving the weather to be here today for the launch of our Healthy Communities Grant Program here in Baltimore City. We are so excited to be here today to celebrate this wonderful occasion. I'm Stacy Tuck from the Baltimore City Health Department, the co-director of the existing Be More Fit project, along with my esteemed colleague, Ms. Robin Truitt Theodorson from the Family League of Baltimore. We wouldn't be able to be here today without the wonderful support and generosity of Weight Watchers and the US Conference of Mayors, and also because of the firm support and leadership of the Be More for Healthy Babies initiative. Thank you so much to Jenna O'Keefe and Rebecca Deneen for their support. And also the partnership with the Chronic Disease Division of the Baltimore City Health Department. Before we begin the program, I'd like to acknowledge this wonderful, beautiful space that we're in here at the Zeta Center and acknowledge the new partnership with my friend, Ms. Betsy Simon. <laughs> Betsy is the director of the ZHAP program, and she also has the support of the president, Ms. Cheryl Woodland, of this Alpha Zeta chapter of the Zeta Phi Beta sorority and Dr. Frida Thompson, who is the chair of the Myrtle Tyler Faithful Fund. <laughs> Thanks also to Ms. Leslie Yancey, the center director, for allowing us to completely come in and take over this building for the last <laughs> several days. I now have the distinct honor of introducing the beautiful mayor of Baltimore City, Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake. Thank you very much, and good morning, everyone. Good morning. Again, I have to thank you as well for braving the weather to come and to be with us on this very, very special day where we welcome back to Baltimore Ms. Jennifer Hudson and uh, Weight Watchers. Can we give her a big hand? <laughs> this is uh, not. This is Ms. Hudson's at least second time that I know about. Third, second or third, I'm claiming two, and I'm claiming responsibility for both uh, times. She performed, <laughs> she performed here a few years ago as the, the surprise headline guest for The Journey Home, which is our efforts to make homelessness rare and brief in Baltimore. And when I say she brought the house down, um, she was, we were doing a conga line all through the convention center. We had a dance off on the stage. I'm not gonna tell you who won. <laughs> But she has been a fantastic supporter, and even on this snowy day, I am so grateful uh, that you are here. And I, I was praying for you all morning. I said, I know she's here already. I'm just praying that you have safe travels going home. All right, I am very pleased to also uh, bring greetings to your councilwoman, if you are in this district. It's certainly, she's certainly the councilwoman for the Zeta Center, and that's Sharon Green, Sharon Green Middleton. I also want to thank Ms. Betsy Simon, who is the uh, head of the Zeta Center here. Thank you so much for, I'm sorry, did I mess it up? Z Hat? All right, head of Z Hat. Thank you for allowing us to be here today. I want to thank Jonathan Rondo. I want to thank the entire Weight Watchers team. I want to thank the entire, at least I see one of the team from the U.S. Conference of Mayors. So thank you very much uh, for being here. And I want to thank all the community members who are here in attendance today. I am very proud to announce the expansion of the Be More Fit for Healthy Babies initiative in Baltimore City. This program is an outgrowth of the Be More for Healthy Babies program, which has been incredibly successful in curbing infant mortality rates across our city. In partnership with Weight Watchers and the U.S. Conference of Mayors, where I currently serve as second vice president, we will be expanding Be More Fit for Healthy Babies to serve more women in Baltimore's Patterson Park and Druid Hill neighborhoods, as well as women and men and seniors in the Park Heights community. Yay, Park Heights! <laughs> Residents with a body mass index of 25 or higher, and I'm telling you, I've, I have um, 
you know, it was a struggle when I was when I first started on my journey. My Weight Watchers coach is over there. She knows it was a it was a struggle, and I was trying to find a BMI, some chart, some official chart that would give me an edge, you know. Instead of I was looking, I was I was looking for the black girls BMI. <laughs> I was like, is it different on the East Coast? And the, you know, I was trying to give myself an edge, but that's it, 25, right? 25, if you're over 25, you were in the overweight category. So that, you know, that was my goal, to get under the, the 25. And so anyway, so if you're the BMI of 25 or higher, you qualify. And let me just explain why, and I know I might get into it a little bit more, or um, my, our health commissioner might get into it. There are so many diseases that are preventable. And those diseases that are preventable, if you are overweight, you are highly susceptible to getting them. Every, everything from high blood pressure, um, diabetes, even some cancers, weight is a contributing factor. And I had to be very honest with myself when I, I don't even want to tell you where my BMI was when I first started, but I had to be honest. Every, I said to myself, everything that you can get that is weight related runs in my family. So I can either face the facts and start doing something about it to take it off, you know, take one thing off the plate. You can't, you can't make up your genetics. You got what you got. But you can help, uh, you know, even the playing field if you control your weight. And that was my goal. So anybody who has a BMI of 25 or higher who, who receives assistance from local, state, or federally subsidized programs such as WIC, SNAP, Medicaid, Medicare, or student aid can qualify for steeply subsidized Weight Watchers meetings, plus online and mobile app tools to help them achieve a, a healthy weight. And I'll tell you, I've tried all of them. They're fantastic. Along with the fitness instruc instruction from local fitness experts. And I even went to a per try to keep up in a, in a Zumba class with the Weight Watchers kids. So anyway, about 36% of the Baltimore City residents, 36% of Baltimore City residents uh, are characterized as obese, which is higher than both the national average and the Maryland statewide average. In addition, 45% of African Americans in Baltimore are obese. That's almost half, which is less than the, the, the uh, more than, the, sorry, it's less than the national average for uh, African Americans, but still higher than uh, Maryland statewide average. Chronic disease, just as I mentioned, such as heart disease, type two diabetes, and stroke, are associated with obesity and the leading cause of death and disability in Baltimore. And for this reason, my administration has identified a reduction of cardiovascular disease and obesity as key health priorities. Reducing obesity and improving heart health are amongst the highest priorities in my administration's health policy agenda, Healthy Baltimore 2015. And it's 2014, so we got it, you know, it was, when, it was, when it was what, 20, it was 2010, we had all the time in the world. It's 2014, so we, got it, we, it's, we really have to um, get more people on board. So healthy eating and good exercise are critically important to all of us. More than any other group, we have to encourage these good habits and foremost for, you know, for our kids. Um, my daughter is here with me today. Sophia, you can, you, yeah, there she is. They're out of school today for the snow. And she was not going to miss a chance to meet Ms. Hudson, so she, here she is. It is. It's for our kids. It's for our kids. That's one of the best gifts we can give is the, the habits of healthy living uh, for our kids. And that's something that they can pass on and then their kids can pass on. And we can really fight the battle that we've, we uh, are waging in our country against childhood obesity. So more than 23 million children and teenagers in the United States ages 2 to 19 are obese or overweight. More than 23 million. Baltimore's childhood obesity rate hovers around 25%. Nearly one-third of America's children are at early risk for type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart disease, conditions usually associated with adulthood. But because of the early onset of, of obesity, the, our kids are facing these adult diseases. Even greater disparities exist among children of color. Children deserve a healthy start in life, and our families and communities need to take action like what we are doing here today in partnership with Weight Watchers and the U.S. Conference of Mayors. 
Baltimore will be a better place and a healthier place because of this partnership. And I am very proud to be able to celebrate with all of you today. Again, thank you very much. Thank you. I'd now like to bring up my partner in the progress for health in Baltimore, our health commissioner, Dr. Oxiris Barbeau. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, I represent the height challenged portion of the program. It'll be most evident when we do the photo ops, you'll see but I'm okay with that. Um, it is very exciting to be with you here this morning with such a distinguished group here. Um, I wanna thank Betsy for her ongoing partnership. I wanna thank Councilwoman Middleton for really supporting everything health and everything seniors here. One of the biggest supporters that the health department has and we really appreciate your support. Ms. Hudson, it's fantastic to have you here in Baltimore. Um, Clearly, when you came in the room, you've got a lot of fans here. So <laughs> keep coming back to Baltimore. Um, and Jonathan, our partnership with Family League in getting Be More Fit for Healthy Babies off the ground and Be More, Be More, oh man, I'm so excited about this, BHB and the birth outcomes results that we've been getting over the last couple of years have been really tremendous. But the reality is that all of that good work could not have happened without the strong leadership of Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake. As you all know, she is an outstanding leader for the city, um, but she is also a huge health advocate and not only has she been uh, ensuring that we do everything that we can to have a healthier Baltimore, but she really has been walking the walk and talking the talk, right? And so it's fantastic to have Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake as a role model for the city and really keeping our feet to the fire. And so when we applied, or when we were in the process for applying for this grant, Mayor Rawlings-Blake said, Barbeau, make it happen and make sure we win. And I'm like, yes, Madam Mayor. <laughs> so it is a pleasure to be here and to really have this partnership and the opportunity that it brings to the communities that we serve. As Mayor mentioned, the rate of obesity in the city of Baltimore is 36%, and that amongst the African-American community, as she mentioned, it's 45%. And I think these are numbers for pause because we hear a lot about the, the way in which obesity contributes to health outcomes, as the mayor mentioned, but the reality is that here in the city, the way that it plays out is way too many premature deaths from these illnesses, right? I don't wanna see any more 45-year-olds having heart attacks because they're obese, because they're not taking care of themselves. And so with the leadership of Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake, we've been focused on nutrition and physical activity because we know that one can't work without the other. And so through her leadership, we're really focusing on food access issues as well as promoting physical activity. One of the other things that don't, we don't hear much about are the effects of obesity on we, women of reproductive age. And that's really what got us into the partnership with Weight Watchers and the fact that women who are obese during their pregnancies have worse outcomes than women who are not obese during their pregnancies. And these are real complications. So complications such as gestational diabetes, having a higher rate of C-sections, miscarriages, and post-op complications. So all of these are preventable. And through the partnership that we have with Weight Watchers, we hope to make a difference in that because we know that no one entity can do it alone. It's about public-private partnerships. It's about the whole city contributing to these efforts. And so through the partnership that we've had with Weight Watchers in the sites that we've been, more than 400 women have participated in Be More Fit since it began in February, February of 2012. And among the 100 participants at both sites, the Druid Upton and the Patterson Park, who have attended the sessions for at least 12 weeks, 42 lost at least 5% of their body weight. That's big. <laughs> Thank you. 
And so we know that a loss of 5% or more is known to improve health outcomes. So part of what Baltimore is known for is being a data-driven, metric-driven city, and Mayor Brawlings Blake ensures that every day we pay attention to those numbers. And so these numbers we track, and they're important, and they give us momentum. So I want to thank, once again, Weight Watchers and the U.S. Conference of Mayors for recognizing the efforts here in Baltimore to combat obesity in communities that are most at need. And for this grant, which will help us expand services into even more areas and touch more individuals. This Healthy Communities Grant will enable the expansion of the program to serve more women in Patterson Park, Druid Hill, as well as women, men, and seniors, as was mentioned here in Park Heights. As the mayor mentioned, in Healthy Baltimore 2015, our goal is to improve heart health and to redesign communities to prevent obesity. And this is yet one more step that we're taking with her direction. So thank you very much. At, at this point, I want to bring up Jonathan Rondo, who's the CEO of the Family League of Baltimore and um, my partner in crime in this effort. So Jonathan. Thank you, Dr. Barbo. Good, Good morning. It's such a pleasure to be here on such an exciting day. As president and CEO of a nonprofit that works with more than 100 partners around the city on different issues, I constantly emphasize the importance of collaboration to the success of changing a community. The Family League of Baltimore has deep relationships at all levels of Baltimore, from the mayor's office to on the ground community organizers. We bring key players to the table to develop tools for change. Be More Fit for Healthy Babies is an excellent example of that. We brought together uh, many different groups to make a different, big difference, starting with women here in Baltimore City. More than three years ago, we partnered with the health department to begin Be More Fit. We knew the program would need both exercise and nutrition as key elements of success, as well as a weight loss program that would meet the needs of the community. We know from experience how well public and private partnerships can address public health problems, which is why we wanted to work with Weight Watchers. Weight Watchers embraced the opportunity to work with us from the very beginning and adapted their program to need, meet the needs of the communities here in Baltimore. The results for Be More Fit have been outstanding. As Dr. Barbo, men, Barbo mentioned, more than 400 women have participated since the program began in two, 2012. Women are also attending regularly with the support of childcare and other wraparound services to have two hours of exercise each week. Be More Fit takes place in Patterson Park, Upton, and Druid Heights, with plans on opening Park Heights, which will be a huge step forward. We, will e we hope to increase this reach even further. Our partnership remains strong as Be More Fit has grown. More than 20 of our coalition partners have consistently been meeting at the table for three years to make sure the program continually evolves to meet the needs of Baltimore's family and children. And that's without money, without dollars, just a desire to improve our community. We're very happy to be co-leading this with the health department. Um, I'd also like to recognize some of our other community partners, Baltimore Medical Systems, Brick Bodies Health Club, Drew and Madame and Healthy Families, and the Y in Central Maryland for their continued and ongoing partnership on Be More Fit. I would also like to thank Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake, Councilwoman Milton, and Dr. Barbeau for their continued leadership on this initiative. I also want to thank Jennifer Hudson for her dedication to Weight Watchers and being a great role model for the women in the room today. Now I'd like to introduce Karen Miller Kovach, the Weight Watchers Chief Scientific Officer. Thank you. Another short impaired person. <laughs> thanks, Jonathan. Um, I also have some thanks I'd like to give. I'd like to thank Mayor Rawlings Blake, the council members, Dr. Barbeau, um, for having us here today, as well as Crystal Swan from the US Conference of Mayors. Betsy Simon and Dr. Frida Thompson for having us in this beautiful Zeta Center that you have, as well as all the other Be More Fit for Healthy Babies partners, members, and distinguished guests of the Zeta Center. All of you, thank you. 
My name is Karen Miller-Kovach. I am uh, the Chief Scientific Officer at Weight Watchers International. In my job, it's my responsibility and my privilege to ensure that Weight Watchers offers programs and services that builds on the latest nutrition and weight loss science. Programs that are effective and proven to help people lose weight, and more importantly, to keep it off. We also strive to have programs and services that are livable and doable because people live in the real world. For those of you that know a little bit about Weight Watchers, uh, I led the teams and hold the patent on both the points and the points plus systems. Um, I have two babies, I love them both. <laughs> and I'm thrilled to be here uh, to represent Weight Watchers today. Well, Baltimore City is known for many things. Great academic centers, crab cakes, <laughs> charm, ability to prepare for snowstorms. <laughs> But under the leadership of Mayor Rawlings Blake and Commissioner Barbeau, it's also becoming a national center known for its public health efforts. With Dr. Barbeau at the helm, we've observed at Weight Watchers and helped to join in on programs and initiatives that are really making a difference to improve the health and well being of the residents here in Baltimore City. So it really kind of came as no surprise to us when an independent judge, a panel of judges, chose Baltimore as the clear large city winner in the U.S. Conference of Mayors and Weight Watchers Healthy Communities Grant Program. As the winner in the large city category, Baltimore was only one of three cities across the nation, joining Racine, Wisconsin, the medium-sized city, and up the road, York, Pennsylvania, as the small city. You may wonder, in this competitive grant um, application process, why did Baltimore win? Well, I can tell you why. As Dr. Barbo mentioned, and I think you recognize, you know there's a lot of large cities in the US that have obesity as a problem, that have a need for a program such as this. To be able to make a difference in terms of its residents by lowering weight and reducing the prevalence of things like type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease. So it was your community that was selected because, like many others, you had the need. But you also have proven programs. You not only have the interest, you have the will to make it happen. Be more for healthy babies. Be more fit for healthy babies, and the innovative, award-winning multi-market programs are among others. This gave the committee the confidence to select Baltimore because you had the leadership, you had a proven track record, and the need so that we know that this grant is going to make a difference. And it's our goal through this grant program to help communities just like Park Heights, Druid Hill, and Patterson Park curb this obesity epidemic by fostering healthier lifestyles among the residents. As the world's leading provider of weight management services, we hold over 40,000 meetings each week where our members learn to live a healthier lifestyle because it's through a healthier lifestyle that a person gets to a healthier body weight. Our program is built on four pillars. Healthy eating, regular physical activity, learning those thinking skills that are necessary to be able to do it for the long term and to be able to do it in an in a environment of support. And then we round it out with things like mobile applications and an online system so that we can be available to our members wherever they are, whenever, they're, whenever they need it, and whatever they're doing. 
So we look forward to working with Baltimore City to deliver our proven program to those who qualify for this program. As there's so many thanks this morning, I'd like to thank the Weight Watchers team that's worked so hard to get this program ready for prime time. I'd like to particularly thank Susan Jenkins, who is our territory manager, as well as Heather Piper. I know that many of you know them, and you know how strong and committed they will be here for you to ensure a successful launch. At Weight Watchers, we believe in new beginnings, and we hope that the program can be a new beginning for all of you who are able to take part in it. And now I have the distinct pleasure of introducing our own very own star Weight Watchers leader and your own Baltimore native, Joanne McCorkle-Smith. She's going to be able to tell you more about the success of the Be More Fit program and what she sees in the future for the U.S. Conference of Mayors and Weight Watchers Healthy Community Grant. Joanne. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. What an absolute pleasure it is for me to be here this morning, standing here representing Weight Watchers. Good morning, Madam Mayor. Good morning, good morning, Ms. Hudson. It is so exciting, isn't it, just being in their presence. <laughs> really. I am first and foremost a child of God. I am also a Weight Watcher member, and I have been for over 40 years. My journey is one that took place in 1971. They were having meetings over at the Provident Hospital over on Liberty Heights. Some of you all will remember that. I joined in 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, and 76. It wasn't until 1976 that I started having some health issues, and my mother rushed me down to Lutheran Hospital. Some of you all will remember that, too. Took me to the ER, and the doctor said, nothing wrong with her. She just got gas. See, they weren't calling it acid reflux back in those days, Jennifer. They were just calling it bad gas. <laughs> he said, usually people, when they get heavy, well, when he said heavy, I heard fat. And I said, I'm going to show him. I didn't even know who him was. I'm going to go back to Weight Watchers, and I'm going to knock a hole in it. And I went back, and my leader who has passed on now, her name was Ina Bronfine, she told me one thing that you're struggling with, Joe, is that you're trying to diet your pounds away. You're going to have to learn to change your behavior toward food and activity. She said, your hungry monster is still calling you around 10.30 at night. You know that hungry monster still calls me <laughs> around 10.30 at night. And when it does, I have to remind that hungry monster that I've had breakfast, I've had a snack between breakfast and lunch, I've had lunch. I've had a snack between lunch and dinner. I've had dinner, right, Jennifer? And I had a snack before I went to bed. Now, how in the world can it be quarter to 11 and I'm still hungry? It ain't hunger, it's an appetite. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to go to bed and sweat it out. And that's what I've learned to do. Did I already tell you how many, how many pounds I lost? Because I can get to rolling and forget. I lost 85 and three-quarter pounds 38 years ago, y'all. <laughs> and it was a blessing to be able to be involved in this project when my TM, who at that time was Judy Wickstead, tapped me and said, we want to go back into the inner city and help so many people learn what you know, Joe. We want to teach them a healthy lifestyle. Well, I was right for it. Because you see, I was born 
on a street called Division Street, which is not that far from here, in Providence Hospital. Isn't it amazing? That it was in a row house at that time. I even went to high school no more than two blocks from here, Douglas High School, class of 70. I know some of y'all doing your math. How old is this woman? <laughs> I lived on a street called Presbury Street between Smallwood and Pulaski. And even today, I live no more than five miles from here in Upper Park Heights. So it was my pleasure to go down into the city again, because I was already in the city. Ain't no going down to it. I'm already in the city. And I go there every Monday night, and some of my young ladies are seated here this, this morning. I go every Monday night. Some nights I fuss at them, but that's okay. And we talk about how to, to retrain our behaviors toward food. We talk about the beauty of fruits and vegetables and how to season some collard greens. See, I was born on a neck bone in a pot of collard greens. <laughs> My mother didn't put bullion and stuff like that in collard greens. I, I had to teach them the pleasures of, of using green peppers and red peppers and all kinds of herbs and seasonings. And I told them that even in the dollar store, you can find some of these things. And even in the back of Marshalls and TJ Maxx, they have seasonings and all of these things. And we, and we talk about that. We even talk about a chicken box. A chicken box is five chicken wings and, and big old french fries. And when you talk about points, that's 59 points. And that's before the half and half. The half and half, well, let me get on with the business of what I'm doing. Some of y'all are getting hungry. But Jennifer, I just want you to know that when they unveiled you as our spokesperson in 2011, you blessed us, honey. So many African-American men and women ran to our meetings, and some of them are still there today. I thank God for you. I met you a few years ago. You may not remember. We were out at the, at the Green Turtle. You were there for a radio station, and I said to you, all I want to say to you is that in three or four years, I still want to say, Jennifer's still keeping that weight off. And you are, girl. You look fabulous. <laughs> I've said enough, because I can talk all day and half the night. You can wake me up in the middle of the night, 2 o'clock in the morning, I can talk about losing weight. <laughs> I just love it. But without further ado, Jennifer, I'm so godly proud of you. I present to some and introduce to many, Miss Jennifer Hudson. <laughs> Woo, thank you. Wow, that was an amazing introduction. And I felt every single thing you said. I, 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 I don't even know where to start, but first of all, I am so honored to be here. I always say I think Weight Watchers is the greatest thing ever created next to God, because I'm with you, sister. Okay, um, but it's life-changing. And Baltimore, first of all, you can do this. It is so amazing. And I was sitting there wondering, like, oh my God, these beautiful men got up there and spoke, and this gentleman, and I'm like, what am I here for? And what am I going to say? Because I'm no speaker, so I'm going to treat you like a Weight Watchers meeting, and as if I'm your leader. But um, I was thinking, like, what, what could I possibly say? But then I was like, you know what? Just tell your story, you know, and speak of my journey and, and my experience that I've had since Weight Watchers has been a part of my life, and it has changed my life. And just to give some encouraging words for anyone in their journey that they're going to start, have started, plan to start, you know, you can do it. I myself, I thought Weight Watchers was crazy when they came to me. I'm like, I can't lose no weight eating no popcorn. That's not gonna happen because I had the diet mentality and I didn't think, you know, I could eat the things that I love. And it wasn't until I started Weight Watchers that I could have the things that I love and, and enjoy it. And I've never been this size in my life, you know? And it's not something that is about size because it's so many different compartments of the weight loss journey. It's one making up your mind wanting to do it. Then you have the people telling you what you should do. It's not about them. Once, if you didn't do it, they're going to talk. 
Once you do it, they're still gonna talk. This is the type of journey that you have to do for yourself. You cannot achieve someone else's goals. It has to be about you. It has to be about what you want for you. And most of all, no matter what path you decide to take, it's all about you making up your mind to do it and what you want for yourself. Um, I don't know, it's so many things to be said. I know I'm honored to be a part of the Weight Watchers family. I'm sure I said that. But I love it so much and I truly believe in a system. It has changed my entire family's lives and lifestyles. I have what over, I wanna say 75 to 100 family members that has joined Weight Watchers and collectively, God, together we've lost over like 2,000 pounds from, yeah. Um, thank you. From my Aunt Bay May at home, and she's the first lady of the church, and she's the oldest family member, and she started her weight loss journey, so there, it's never too late. It can always happen, and one of my New Year's resolutions this year was to, I'm like, I want to help change lives, and you know, so that, I guess I'm starting this by being here, and, and hopefully my testimony can, you know, help inspire someone else's journey and make a difference in, in someone else's life. Um, so you guys can contribute to my New Year's resolution. <laughs> um, what else can I tell you? But be inspired and also do what works for you. That's most important. Like it's your own journey and no one can tell you what to do. And don't overshoot your goals. Take baby steps. If I le leaped off the stage right now and I said I'm going to make it over there, nope, I'm going to fall right in the hole. But if I take step by step, I'll get there. And that's what it's about. It's about taking your time, making it work for you. I always tell people, they be like, do Weight Watchers really work? Is it just really Weight Yes, it's Weight Watchers. And once they talk to me long enough, they're like, oh my God, it's really real. It is real. And I always say, it works if you work it. So you have to work it and you have to make it work for you. You know? So... Good luck, Baltimore. Let's get at it. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I don't know what else to say. Just what I do. Hello. How can anyone top that? Give her another round of applause. Woo! Jennifer's in the house. All right. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Again, we welcome you. But it's time to close. And as we close, let's thank, first of all, our mayor and health commissioner and council um, woman Middleton for pushing the vision and being the leaders to get things done, because that's exactly what it takes. Without leadership and a vision, nothing can happen. And then to have someone come and motivate, that puts it all together. Let's give the team of leadership a hand. As a certified health education specialist, and I need to see that, say that, and a forever advocate of community health, I think we need to just applaud Weight Watchers. Applaud Weight Watchers, and I'll tell you why after you applaud. <laughs> when you look at Weight Watchers, we know that it's one of the few programs that's evidence-based, scientifically sound, will work if you work it, as Jennifer said. So what we want to say is for them, Weight Watchers, to connect with the health department in Baltimore City to fulfill a need to eliminate a risk factor. That is awesome. Many speak it, few do it. So Weight Watchers did, let's give them a hand. Now often we have people who will say, that's so nice, I, I think you should do it, go right ahead. But you heard from partners today who stood here and said, we're committed, we're gonna make it work. You heard them all, they're here and there and out there. And what they're saying is that we're gonna stick with it for the long haul, because the worst thing you can do is bring a grants program into a community and leave, and the problem remains. So they are saying, once this kicks out, we are still here. So let's applaud the partners.
And then when you say who's on the ground, you know, and I'm going to miss someone, but I'm just going to call a few names because with the partners, they're going to be working all out, but the people who are on the ground in the trenches will continue to make it happen. And that's why it's such a great thing to know that our sorority, Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, allowed me to found and direct ZHAP which is Zeta Healthy Aging Partnership, but it's also our connect to the whole family. It's not just for older adults. We meet here for the whole family. And Dr. R says aging start, starts at 16, so all of you are here. But we are working toward that. So the leadership of Cheryl Woodland, Dr. Frida Thompson, and the members of the sorority that's here is to be applauded, but we couldn't do it if we didn't have people in the trenches like a Willie Flowers, like a Paula Bird like Julius Cologne, you know, like our councilwoman, like those who come and go like Viola Bell, like Ben, like the ZHAP prep team members who are in the house. Any ZHAP prep team members in the house? All right, on a snowy day. So that's why we're gonna close out and we gotta go. Now, let me tell you a few things. <laughs> We applauded Jennifer, she's here under these circumstances. So we want to applaud her one more time and I'll tell you why. <laughs> Jennifer is putting the spotlight on a need that can help to eliminate health disparities among people in Baltimore City. And then when we can come to a center like this, under the leadership of Leslie Yancey, we know we can get it done. But as we get ready to depart, be mindful. Her schedule is tight. We have a lot to do to get out of here. So we won't be able to do the photo shots, you know, that we normally do. They are very specific. And on your little note, it's stated that when we close out and I'm the closing, then we will begin to leave and she will talk to a few people in the back, but um, we'd love to all hug you, but we won't do it today. Just give, stand and give us a major hug and that's what we have. She's hugging everybody. All right. I just wanna say one more thing because you made a good point. Being here through the storm is half the battle. That shows that you are motivated, you are serious, and that's all it takes. So make it happen. All right. Yes.